This lesson's about chain rule. Just make sure we can still actually differentiate. They, these first three examples, remember to differentiate normal functions. We multiply by the power, so 3 times 2 is 6. Reduce the power by 1 instead of squared to the power 1. Differentiating number 0, multiply 3 and 5 together. 15, reduce the power by 1. And for the more complex examples, we need to rearrange the original function to give it a negative or fractional power, and then we can differentiate. Reducing this power by 1 gets it to minus 3, so y dash is minus 10 on x cubed. So if you have more difficult functions where there's a function inside a function, we're going to use this thing called the chain rule. However, I could differentiate this function 3x plus 1 all squared by just doing expansion. So I'm going to differentiate this by expanding the brackets first. Okay, so you can do FOIL or whatever. And differentiate it. Okay, so the reason I did it by expansion is to show that the chain rule actually works. So using the chain rule, this is a really important part. So to find the derivative, I'm going to treat this thing like it's just a block, like it's just one variable, and differentiate it as per usual. So I'd multiply by 2, and then reduce the power by 1. So instead of the power 2, it's the power 1. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite what was inside in the brackets, and multiply by the derivative of what was inside those brackets. So my derivative is 2 times 3x plus 1 times the derivative of 3x plus 1, which is 3. So if I... 3 times 2 is 6. If I expand these brackets, I get exactly the same as what I got when I expanded. So it seems like it's good to go. So formally... This is the chain rule, hey, but I'm happy for you guys to just write this when you're differentiating. So to differentiate some bigger examples, hey, so differentiating y equals 2x plus 5 to the power of 100, you could do this by expansion. Hey, so putting 100 terms beside each other and expanding. Who wants to do that? I see no hands going up, maybe because it's the video, maybe because that would take ages. But I could differentiate it again by imagining this as a block, multiplying by 100, reducing the power by 1, and then looking inside the function and multiplying by the derivative of that inside function. So I've really got 100, this big thing, multiply by 2. And 100 times 2 is 100. Okay, that's my derivative. Okay, so moving on. Slightly more complex example. I'm trying to find f dash of x. I'm wondering what's going to happen to this 3 here. Well, my inside function, or my the function of the function, is this one. So I'm going to pretend that doesn't exist. And differentiate it like normal, multiply by the power, 8 times 3 is 24. Reduce the power by 1. And then multiply by the derivative of what was inside. Okay, so I'll end up with 24, 6x squared plus x, multiplied by 12x plus 1. And we can't really do anything more with that. We can't simplify it. Final example where it gets a little bit nasty. Whenever I've got a square root function, I recognize that that really means to the power of a half. Okay, and now I can have a go at differentiating. So I'll pretend that's not there. And differentiate like normal. Multiply by a half. Reduce the power by 1, a half take away 1 is minus a half. And then I can look inside. 
4x plus 7 multiplied by the derivative of 4x plus 7. So my derivative will be a half 4x plus 7 to the minus a half times 4. 4 times a half is 2. And this one with the negative power, I'm going to take below the fraction line. And it'll be to the power of positive a half. So it should be 4x plus 7 to the positive a half. But I'm going to write, instead of positive a half, I'll write it back into the square root notation. Now you can take some more steps if you need. So over the page, there's a heap of examples for you to have a go at to practice this skill. Okay, lots of examples and lots of solutions. Okay, good luck.